Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jennifer Hibbard and I'm here with Adam Gatner today. And Adam is a research scientist in many fields. He's done a lot of research in logistics, in physics, in the military, and biological research. So we're here to talk about uh, COVID-19 and his research with ivermectin. Adam, why don't you talk about just all your knowledge about ivermectin and just what your opinion is of this considering that you've been talking about it for over a year now. Yeah, I mean, I identified it as a curative for COVID back in uh, April of last year. And uh, we've been trying to get the word out since. It's really quite incredible just how many actions it has against this virus and against so many other viruses as well. I mean, we have a cure. We have a cure for COVID-19. We're just seeing in India now, uh, dengue should be having, there should be wide outbreaks of dengue fever right now because the Indian government's been promoting ivermectin for COVID-19. We're not seeing dengue fever broadly across India at the moment. It's a fantastic prophylactic. It can prevent infection very early on in the course of disease. It can, it isn't always, but it can be a effective monotherapy and it is useful at later stages of the disease as well. So it is an absolute, absolutely vital backbone. It's a new antiviral. It is an entirely new class of antiviral. It activates our natural defences. It acts on the virus itself. It acts on parts of the virus. So it, is, it has so many different methods of action. It has action against cancers as well, parasites. It is, it's a miracle drug. It's new penicillin viruses, and it is a very broad miracle drug. And all we have left to do now is to let the world know. I'm at the moment, I'm trying to focus on World of Mexican Day on July, this July 24th to end the pandemic entirely. I think if we can get, have everybody in the world take some manner of prophylactic, ivermectin will be great, but there's a number of other treatments and prophylactics that are very effective. We could end the pandemic we could eradicate COVID-19 and so many other diseases while we're at it. So we have, we have a miracle drug. We've had it for the last year. It's being ignored as hard as possible by most of the world's medical authorities. Uh, I'm sure you might, have, you might be aware that India is suing the WHO for genocide, saying, you know, they've been running this misinformation campaign about it. There's so much science, there's so much corrupt fake science out there being produced. It really is quite incredible the lengths that the medical and academic research establishment is going to to suppress the effectiveness of ivermectin, to convince the MDs that are seeing their patients that there's nothing that can be done for COVID. It's really incredible to see these, these MDs still thinking that there's nothing to be done. Go home and get sicker and go to the hospital if you really if you can't breathe. It's insane. We have a cure. We have a preventative and we have a cure. And we're not going to have it forever. That's the most dangerous part of this. The virus will eventually adapt to ivermectin as well as a number of the other therapeutics we're using. And we're starting to see that in Delta now. A higher dose of ivermectin is required for Delta than has been required for the other previous strains that came before the vaccines came out. So we have a cure for the time being. A very effective prophylactic, very effective cure. We need to use it. We need to push, get the word out to everybody in the world, set the date and end the plague. This is July 24th, World of Mexican Day, we can end it. We can get this done, I think. It's extraordinarily effective for prevention and for early treatment. And it is a fantastic adjunct in late treatment as well. It's most effective in the viral replication stage. It can uh, prevent that viral replication taking place. But even in later disease, it also has immun immunomodulatory functions. So it can prevent and reduce that inflammation. It can still prevent, it can bind the virus, prevent further cell entry. But it is, it's a, it should be an absolute backbone of treatment. Anyone presenting with COVID-19, the first thing you should say, ivermectin, 400 micrograms per kilogram, with some milk or a lipid, it is extremely safe. It's one of the, safe, one of the safest drugs in history. Safer than uh, Tylenol. Much, much safer than Tylenol. Has a very broad uh, therapeutic window. 
So dangerous overdoses are really unlikely. It can have some nasty side effects in an overdose. It can cause some nausea, some vertigo. But uh, generally speaking, it's one of the safest, most well-studied drugs in existence. Bar none, there, I, I can't name a single drug that has been studied as much as ivermectin for COVID-19 with such positive results, so, many, so frequently repeated. And the only reason that so many of these studies are still being conducted is because the health authorities are ignoring it. Ordinarily, by now, with this level of evidence, it would be accepted and celebrated and in use, and the pandemic would have been long since over. This pandemic should have been over a year ago. We have a cure. That's the bottom line. We have a cure. I mean, if we keep on delaying and we keep ignoring the evidence, it might stop working eventually. And I'm sure the detractors at that point are going to jump up and say, hey, look, it doesn't work. We've done a proper trial. We've finally done an honest proper trial and look, it didn't work. That could happen in six months' time, in a year's time, if it stops working. We need to make use of it now. We need to use it while we still have it to eradicate COVID-19 because it's possible. It, we've never had a drug this effective that works in this manner so broadly that we could use to effectively eradicate this virus. Thanks so much, Adam, for joining me. And thank you for reinforcing World Ivermectin Day, July 24th.